Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Creature Science Illustrated. In this one, we're going to continue from a live stream where I drew these six sharks and asked you guys to vote for your favorite number three one. And so what I said I would do is I would fully render the shark that most people voted for, and number three was by far the one that most of you voted for. So here it is. I'm, I am rendering it. Now, just to let you know, I have this video sped up to 400 times, so it's, or, well, four times, not 400 times. It's, anyway, it's four times faster, and so even though this video is around 15 minutes, this whole process took me about an hour and 10 minutes to do. So bear that in mind if you think, wow, <clears throat> it's so quick. He can do all this in like 10, 15 minutes. No, he can't. Uh, this is sped up. But anyway, uh, so I'm drawing this shark. I'm putting in my sketch. I just wanted to redraw it. And there were a few things I needed to fix, like that right pectoral fin uh, was not right on the, the one that I drew. The thing is, all of the sharks that I drew were out of my imagination. So sometimes that's fun, but sometimes there are disadvantages to that. And you can mess up with perspective and proportions and, and that kind of stuff when you your brain says this is what a shark looks like and reality says no clearly it's not but so I had to uh, I had to reassess that fin and I fixed that and also did a little bit of adjustment to the nose to the mouth what I ended up doing is making this made the shark look a little bit more realistic it's still not like a photorealistic shark it's not a specific species of shark it's kind of generic shark but since everybody voted for number three, and number three was by far the most realistic looking shark of the six, I thought, well, maybe that's what that's what the people want. And if that's what the people want, that's what the people are gonna get. So here is here is my sketch. So I always I usually start with a, a foundation sketch, and this helps me to make sure that I'm getting everything getting everything laid out the way I want it. Now I'm pretty happy with the sketch at this point. So I lowered the opacity. That's an advantage of drawing digitally or painting digitally. And by the way, this is an app on the iPad called Procreate. I'm using an Apple Pencil with pressure sensitivity. If you're new to the channel, that's what I use most of the time, not all the time, but that's what I'm using here. So another advantage to digital art is that you have these things called layers. And so I'm actually drawing this on another layer. Think of it as a transparent page over my drawing. And so I'm blocking in the color. And the reason I did that is because I can make it to where only those pixels that are colored can be painted. So now I can paint with this airbrush brush on here and I don't have to worry about going over the lines. Now I could have done it and just erased away or I could have been really meticulous and careful if I were doing this for real, by well, I shouldn't say for real. If I was doing this with traditional media, I'd have to mask it off with something or or just be really, really precise. But with like something like an airbrush, you can't. You have to mask it off with stencils. So digital just lets you do that a little bit easier with built-in um, tools. So now I've got the, the light and the dark laid in here. So uh, the counter shading of the shark and now what I'm doing is adding some shadows. I had to figure out where the light was coming from. I determined the light was coming from the top, uh, sort of from the right, but mostly just from the top. And, uh, and so I'm putting in the, the dark shadows, drawing in the five gills, and then I'll kind of blend these together. There's the tail. The tail is further back, so I'm adding a little bit of extra shadow to that. And what you're going to see in this is that I kept going back with darker colors, so I wanted to get that contrast to make it pop more. That's a that's something that can be challenging for artists to not do, is to not create enough contrast, and then you end up with sort of this washed out piece. And hey, maybe that's the look that you're going for, but in most cases, it is probably not. So uh, you wanna make sure and hit that contrast and that sort of thing. All right, so now we're gonna add some shadows to the bottom of the shark here. Get those shadows in. The, and what the shadows are gonna do, and eventually the highlights are gonna do, is they're going to make the shark more three-dimensional. And since this is 
I was going for a little bit more of a realistic looking shark. I didn't want to put lines on there like a kind of a comic -y looking shark. I wanted all the lines to be defined like they would be naturally, which is through shadows, light, dark highlights, and shadows. So, so that's another reason why you want to make sure and get that contrast really defined uh, on this sort of a, of a painting. So here I'm trying to really make some of these things pop now, adding a little extra dark and extra light on there. Go. Yeah, and now I'm working on the dorsal fin and the back. And that line that you see there, that is called the lateral line. That's one of the shark's seven senses that they use to pick up pressure changes and vibrations in the water. So they can use that to figure out where they're swimming. They can use that to find prey. There's a lot of advantages of that. And you notice there's like a blank spot where the eye is and the mouth is. Because remember, I locked the transparency, which means I locked those pixels. So in order to paint on those, I'm either going to have to unlock it or what you're, see, what you're going to see that I do is I'm actually going to go on a layer underneath it. And the cool thing about that is, again, I can be kind of sloppy with it and I'm painting underneath and it's like the body of the shark is just overlaid on top of that. So um, it just makes it... A little quicker a little easier to do that without having to um, apply the type of masking techniques that you would if you were doing this traditionally all the brushes I used in this for for the most part of them the pencil brushes to sketch were what this app considers kind of an airbrush type brush so it's just a very soft brush and I would just change the size like I have it pretty small here to get that more defined highlight on the top of the shark's back and dorsal fin. Now sometimes it's hard to see what I'm doing because the changes are probably really small, but now I'm underneath. So this is on that layer below and I just kind of filled it in. You're gonna see that I, I'm struggling a little bit with the eye. I tried to render it one way. I kind of gave it a cat shaped eye and uh, it wasn't working, I didn't have it bright enough, and then I decided that I wanted to make the eye uh, more of a circular, like a circular pupil, so you're going to see right here, I'm just, I'm trying to experiment a little bit, and then I'm like, eh, forget it, I'm just going to wash over the whole thing, start over from scratch, and, uh, and this ended up being a lot more successful, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm shading the eyeball like a sphere, so if you think about it, whenever you draw stuff, it's just broken down into a bunch of random shapes, so the eye is more or less in most things it's a sphere and uh, and there see I'm still trying to do that cat eye because some sharks do have that cat eye some have more of a round pupil but I really decided when I put this rounder pupil shape in that 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 seemed to fit this generic species of shark better so I so I've got that in there so I've got my sphere I've got my pupil I'm, I'm now I'm gonna try and do some highlights and I realize I need to darken the pupil so I'm gonna actually make that a little bit darker and then also I didn't want that yellow color for the highlights. You're gonna see me struggle a little bit with where to put the highlights uh, on there. I, I kept wanting to put it down low, it just didn't look right. Um, if that seems weird to you because the light's coming from the top, but remember the eyeball is kind of this clear dome. So sometimes the light will shine through and you'll get a weird highlight that bounces into or, or reflects into the lower part of the eye. But in this case, um, I wanted the main highlight on the top and then you see a little bit a reflection on the bottom and then we're going to go on to the mouth the mouth of of the shark and um, basically I I tried a couple different things here first I, I tried putting the teeth in but I see I had a little bit of white on the edge and then I realized a couple of things one I was making these teeth way too big and two I didn't want that white behind there so I ended up just starting over again I just painted all this dark brown and now I start putting the teeth in now this shark is rendered in the way that I wanted it to be rendered, so it's still a little bit painterly. It's not super photorealistic. Um, I wanted it to look kind of real, but I didn't want it. I didn't want it to be like ultra ultra real. So um, that allowed me to do things like make the teeth pretty generic. Uh, what I had to do then, when I got these teeth laid in, though, I had to go onto the layer above it, and then I had to add the teeth 
over that layer. So what I mean is those teeth that are on the left side of the shark's mouth on the top jaw. And here I'm just adding a little bit of highlight and dark differences inside the mouth because it's not going to be all dark or all light. And now we're going to add the nares. We don't call these nostrils on sharks, we call these nares. And the, and the difference is that you can't, t typically nares are something you would describe they're like nostrils, but they're not used for breathing. They're, um, they're only used for a sense of smell in a lot of animals, the shark being one of those animals. So sharks can't breathe through their nostrils. They, they have to take water in through their mouths usually and then over their gills. There are some species that have spiracles that allow them to pump the water, but, um, but normally it's going through the mouth and over the gills, and then their gills are pulling the oxygen out of the water as they swim. That's why you hear a lot of people say that sharks can never stop swimming. Obviously, some sharks can. Nurse sharks would be a good example of that, or, or any of the cat sharks, carpet sharks. But uh, a lot of sharks can't really stop, or at least can't stop for very long, because they will, essentially, they'll drown. Now, uh, I got the mouth in, I got the eye in. I'm going back, I'm adding some more dark colors to really kind of pop that contrast. And uh, once I get this where I want it, I'm also going to try and, and uh, get some harder lines on there. So I switched to an airbrush that was a little bit harder on the edge, and that's going to allow more definition, like where the dorsal fin and the back meet. That was way too fuzzy. So here I'm, I'm adding that now. So here I'm gonna put the dark in on the dorsal fin, okay, and that's a little sloppy, and then I'll go through and I'll add this highlight over the top of it, and then I'm just gonna blend it in a little bit. And see how that kind of makes it pop and helps define it a little bit more. So that's all we're doing there. I'm gonna do the same thing down here with the left pectoral fin. Make it a little darker, because there's gonna be a little bit of a shadow from the body or underneath the fin, and then just kind of fades into a lighter color, because that is a lighter color skin on the shark. And a little extra highlight and shadow here and there, just to, just the finishing touches. I had to get that second dorsal fin defined. I'm gonna uh, kind of help pop the caudal fin, the tail fin out a little bit more. Just doing like my final touches, just adding a little bit more darkness to there. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna add a little more darkness again to the body then after that just to really make it stand out. Also, a little highlight on the rim of that fin to make it look more three-dimensional. Yeah, so there I am defining that lateral line again. And then I'm just gonna kinda, I, so I do it on there real dark and then I kinda blend it in. It's kinda like if I was doing this with paint, I would put the paint on there, if, especially if it's oil paint, and then I would color in the lighter color to get it right. And then just all that's left is to do the background. I basically took a big airbrush and uh, just kind of laid in some different colors, kind of got lighter towards the towards the top, and then just kind of blended that all in. I, I, I didn't want it to blend perfectly smoothly because I felt like having some definition of the lines kind of helped give it sort of a watery look. And then up at the top, I wanted it to kind of look like maybe we were looking up at the surface. So I decided to um, to take some white and later, oh, I also put the blue. I took that background layer and overlaid it over to kind of give my shark a little bit of a subtle blue tint. So I just put it on there and just lowered the opacity quite a bit. It's another cool thing you can do with digital. And then uh, and then I decided to try some different white lines to, to give the water some waves, but that didn't work. So I went to that surface idea that I just mentioned where I decided to... Um, to try and make it look like you could see the surface from underwater. Here we go. This is where I finally do that. Yeah, so I'm just putting in like the highlights so like you're underwater looking up and you can kind of see the surface. And what I did, this technique that I, that I tried was to um, make sort of the wavy lines of the surface and then I did a blur on it to kind of make it blend in. And then, um, yeah, that was it. Then I just had to sign my name and we're all done. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you want to try drawing a shark, 
go over to Creature Science Illustrated community on Facebook and post your drawings. Consider subscribing to the channel, hit that bell for notifications so you know when new videos come out or when I do live stream. Well, thanks for watching and have a fantastic day.